Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Linda. Here on this channel, I share videos about sewing, pattern drafting, and everything fashion. On today's tutorial, I'm going to be sharing with you guys how to draft this beautiful corset gown you are seeing right here on your screen. This is the option one dress you guys requested for on my community post. So you guys voted this the most. It's also a dress my client requested for, and I'm going to be using her measurement for it. If this is what you're interested in, you might want to keep watching. So do the needful by tapping on the subscribe button, it actually costs nothing. Also tap on the notification bell for more videos like this. Now come along with me as you are watching and let's draft. So guys on my work table I already have my pattern paper and I'm going to be drafting this as one piece because I'm drafting from the shoulder to the knee length. Then later on I'm going to divide it and remove the skirt pattern and the corset pattern and separate them in two pieces. Now the first thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and mark our body's measurement. Okay, I'm going to start marking our basic bodies. So from my shoulder line to this point we are marking is the first point okay for my client is nine and a half so from that shoulder line still i'm going to be leaving my tape there and i'll mark her on the bust point which is 12.5 still leaving my tape row at the shoulder line i'm going to mark her waist measurement which is 16 inches and then i'll head over to mark the hip line which is 26 inches okay i'm still leaving my tape row at the shoulder line so go ahead and mark your hip line at this point and then for the length of the gown, I'm going to mark where the length stops. So for this, I'm going to make use of the full length of the gown because it's the full length to the ankle. So I'll get my straight ruler and connect this point I made into horizontal lines. After marking the lines, I'll go ahead and label this as my bust point and this point is going to be my under bust. This is the waistline and then this is the hip line and the other one there is the full length. So now I'm going to mark the standard neckline of 3 inches width and 3 inches depth. This is really not useful, I'm just marking it for reference purpose and then I'm going to connect it with my curved ruler. After connecting with my curve ruler, the next thing I'm going to do is to measure my shoulder measurement, okay? For the shoulder measurement of my client, I have 16 inches, divided by 2 is 8 inches. So I'm going to mark 8 inches here. And then at that point, I'll rotate my tape rule and come down by 1 inch for the shoulder slope. Now I'm going to connect that dot to the tip of the neckline. And there we have it. This is because our shoulder is not straight. Now the next thing I'll do is to come down at this point where I marked my shoulder slope. I'm going to be marking my armhole depth. So for my client, it's 8 inches. I'm going to mark 8 inches like this, like you see me doing. And from there, I'm going to connect the straight line and bring it outwards towards the outer part of the pattern paper. Now, once again, I'm going to place my tape through from the tip of the shoulder and I'm going to mark the upper test line. This is the depth of the neckline we are cutting for this dress. In this case, it's an off shoulder dress and I'm picking a depth of about seven inches. Okay, so I'm going to mark seven inches or seven and a half inches because I'm trying to decide if I'm going to expose the boobs or not. Now, I'm going to be creating a horizontal line on that point. And then I'll move over to start creating our bust span. To create your bust span, measure your nipple to nipple measurement and divide it into two. So on this part of the pattern paper where I made a fold, I'm going to be marking it on all the horizontal lines I have here. So I marked it on the upper chest line, on the bust point, on the under bust, on the waist line, and on the hip line. And then I'm going to connect them into a straight line. So guys, on the under bust line, I'm going to be marking 0.75 inches on both sides because I want to take in my darts. So from there, I'm going to connect it to the bust point and then add the up, which is the upper part of the chest line. I'll be marking half inch on both sides. Okay, so I'll go ahead right now and use my ruler to connect this point to the bust point line. After I was done creating the curves around the bust, 
I went ahead to extend this line and it's going to be my chest line. So I'll go ahead and mark it as my upper chest line and this part of the armhole as my chest line. So next thing I'm going to do right now is to check the length of the dart where I'm going to take the dart. So I'm going to go upwards by 2 inches around the hip line and then I'm going to mark my connection there. So guys, I'm going to connect my dart legs to that point I made around the hip line area and I'm going to place my ruler this way to make the connection from here down to that part. Then I'm going to be eliminating this initial one I did around the waistline. So I'll go ahead and draw my marker around this part and I'll repeat the same thing on the opposite side as well. So I'll just go ahead and cancel this part on the waistline. We are not going to follow that anymore. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to mark my body measurement. On the bust point line, I'm going to mark quarter of her bust circumference and repeat the same thing on the chest line. Then I'll move over to the upper chest line, which is either 1.5 or 2 inches above our bust point. In her own case, it's 32 inches divided by 4 is 8 inches. Now on the under bust line, I'm going to mark the quarter of the under bust circumference. And then I'll move over to the waistline. I'm going to be marking the quarter of my waistline circumference. And then at the hip line, I'll be imputing the quarter of the hip line circumference. Next, I'll go ahead and connect this point I made. So guys, I'm going to replace back the darts I took out. This is the first dart I created. So for the upper chest line, I'm going to, I have one inch there. I'm going to replace it at this part. And then at the under bust point, I'm going to mark the what I have there for the dart and then I repeat the same thing for the waistline as well. So you can just choose to connect the darts or leave it for now. So I'll just go ahead and just illustrate it for you guys to understand. So this is just the dart I'm including. So guys, I almost forgot, I'm going to include the armhole curve. So I'll go ahead and mark the distance from my shoulder slope to the armhole depth and then I'll mark the midpoint. From there, I'm just going to connect the points. So guys, at the waistline, I'm going to check what I have from this dart to the last part of my line. I'm going to divide it into two and then connect it upwards to the upper chest line. And then I will also extend it down to the hip area, to the hip line. So I'm trying to create the second dart for our corset. Because this is a Victorian corset, it's safe to add as many darts as possible. So now I'm going to do away with this line I drew initially for our body measurement. And after that, I'll go ahead and impute my dart on the waistline. So I'll be coming inwards by half half inch. So half inch on this part and half inch on the other part, which will make up to one inch. So I'll just go ahead and mark my points and then I'm going to repeat the same thing at the tip of the upper chest line. I'll mark a quarter of an inch on both sides. This is going to help with the bust tightening effect at the upper chest line. So now I'll go ahead and just connect the line and create another dart from there. So guys, I'm going to be creating the third dart, which is the last dart we're going to have on our corset. So I'll go ahead and divide what we have here into two and get the midpoint. So this is around the waistline, okay? So place your tape rule there and get the midpoint. And whatever you have left, divide it into two. And then draw a straight line all the way from the upper chest line down to the hip line, just like I did for the others. Now I'm going to be marking... 0.25 inch on both sides of this dart this is because i want it to just have half inch difference from others also because i don't have much space there now i'm going to connect my dots from that waistline to the under bust and then i'll also connect from the waistline down to the hip area where i marked two inches so guys, next thing I'll do is to replace the measurement I took out and then I'll also add 1.5 inch for our general stitching allowance. Okay, so I'm just calculating the rest of the darts minus the other darts, the first that we took in. So I'll calculate the darts in red and then add it back and also add my general stitching allowance which is 1.5 inch. So you can mark 2 inches stitching allowance if you want to have a lot of stitching allowance. So I'll go ahead and connect these dots into a line to bring out our body measurement. So don't worry if your patterns are looking somehow funny like this. This is because we've had too many darts around the underbust and the waistline. So it may look funny but when you close your darts and stitch everything together it's going to start making sense. 
At the armhole, I'm going to mark our new armhole. So I'm going to mark it from 1.5 inches away from the original armhole we have. This is because we are cutting off shoulder. We are not going to be using the long armhole. So this will become my number one pattern. This is my number two and then three and four. So we have four pieces all together for this corset. So to mark the skirt part, I'm going to measure my quarter of my hip length circumference here. So for my client, it's 39 inches divided by four. I'm going to be marking what I have. And then I'm going to be adding our allowance. As you can see, we already have our sewing allowance there. Now I'm going to head over to the knee length. I'm going to come in with by half inch. Okay. So the difference of what I have for my hip line and on my knee line is half inches. This is because it's just a straight cut. We are not going to be making it that pencil. So I'll just make it a little bit pencil by using my curve ruler to connect the points. So guys, before cutting out the neckline, I'm going to open it up in one piece so that we can extend these lines to the other part. This is because I'm cutting an asymmetric waistline, so we don't have to cut it on fold. So I'll go ahead and extend all the horizontal lines into the other part of the pattern paper. And then I'm going to use that as a guide to measure out our sewing allowances so we can have the same thing we have on the other side. So guys, after I was done with the markings, I went ahead to let out this part as a sewing allowance and then I had to do away with all the extra lines in red. Now I'm going to determine the side to pick for our asymmetric neckline and to do that I'm going to place my tape roll from my shoulder line this way and measure 26 to 25 inches. You can leave it at 25 inches if you wish or you leave it to start from the hip line. So I'm going to be marking mine from the hip line. What I have there is 26 inches. So I'll go ahead and mark it and connect it to the waistline here. So guys, when you want to mark your own asymmetric waistline, don't mark from the sewing allowance. It's best to come out from the sewing allowance and mark directly from the seam line. So guys, this is what I had. I'm going to be extending this part into the sewing allowance just like this and then I'll cut out the skirt pattern. So guys, after cutting it off, this is going to be my skirt pattern, okay? As you can see, it's not equal on the both sides. Now I'm going to trim out the excesses I have around the sewing allowance and then I'll mark it as a skirt pattern for the front. Heading back to my upper part, I'm going to measure the neckline I want to use for this dress. So I'll place my tape rule on the shoulder like this and then I'm going to mark the length of what I want for my neckline. So you're going to come up with by one inch from the bust point line. So you're going to come up with from the bust point line by one inch and mark a point there and then you're going to connect it into the armhole area. So get your curve ruler and mark a sweetheart neckline just like you see me doing. Now I'm going to be taking out this portion of the yoke because we don't need yoke for this particular dress. So I'll cut everything out. Please pay close attention to how I'm doing this so you don't make mistakes. So guys, this is what I had after I was done cutting my patterns and this is how it's going to look on my... And these are all the front pieces of the pattern. So all together I have seven pieces and I labeled it A to G. So you might want to just take your time and label each one because they are all different. Now this is the lower part of the skirt which I'm going to attach as well. So now I'm going to set it aside and cut out to the back. So for the back piece, I've gone ahead to impute all my measurements for the basic bodies just like I did for the front and I also included my zipper allowance. So now I'm going to take my shoulder measurement and then I'll go ahead and connect the neckline. And after doing that, I'll go ahead and label this part as my zipper allowance. 
that is if you are going to attach a zipper but in this case i'm going to be attaching loops okay i'm going to be lacing it up so now i'm going to take my nipple to nipple measurement on all the horizontal lines and then i'll go ahead and connect it with a straight ruler so if you are taking notice i didn't mark my under bust measurement we don't need it for the back piece so after i'm done connecting the lines from my nipple to nipple i went ahead to come in with by one inch on both sides okay so i'll mark one inch on both sides of the waistline and after that i'll go ahead and, and also mark it at the upper chest line so you can leave it this way with one dart or you can have two darts on the back piece at the hip line i'm going to come up with by two inches that's where my dart leg is going to be stopping at and then i'll go ahead and connect the points i made Now the next thing I'm going to do is to mark the body measurement and also replace the dart I'm taking out. After I am done connecting the line, I went ahead to draw the new armhole. So guys, I'm going to go ahead right now and mark the depth of the neckline for the back piece. So in this case, I'm also coming up with by one inch. You can choose to make it one and a half if you don't want it to be so deep. So I'll go ahead and connect it with my curve ruler and then I'll mark out my sewing allowance. So guys, on the knee length, I'll go ahead and impute my measurements just, just like I did for the front and then I'm going to replace the sewing allowance as well. So the knee length measurement is a bit smaller than that of the hip line. Now what you see me doing is adding back the measurements I have on the other side. So I'll go ahead and just make sure I have the same amount of measurements I have for the sewing allowance so that everything looks perfect. So guys, I'm going to be marking the skirt pattern for the back using the skirt pattern of the front as a guide. So go ahead and flip the front piece to face the right side with the back. They should be facing each other to avoid having two same sides. So there are two things involved for this part. One is that there is a zipper allowance and the other one is there is a loop on the upper part. So if you are going to leave your zipper allowance on the upper part, go ahead and do exactly what I am doing. Make sure that you just trace out all these lines to the other side to have equal measurements. But if you want to take out the zipper allowance at the top and insert a loop, I'm going to be showing you the method to achieve that in the easiest way. So I'll go ahead and connect these points together. So guys, I'll go ahead and label this part as the back piece of the skirt. And as you can see, it's facing right side to right side with the front skirt. So now I'll cut out the slanted part of the back skirt and this is what it looks like. So I'll go ahead and trim out the excesses and then I'll set it aside to work on the upper part. Now for the upper part of the back piece, I'll go ahead and fold it in place and, and extend the dart lines. So I'll go ahead and extend these dart lines to the other side so that I'll have equal dart intake. At the lower part of the dart, I marked 0.25 on both sides and then I'm just going to connect the sides for the sewing allowance and then I'll label this as the center back and this part as the side back. So guys, I'm not going to be making use of the zipper allowance. I'll fold it inwards and mark the measurement for the loops. So on that center back, I'm going to be coming inwards by one inch. This can vary from one person to another. If you want too much opening on the back, go ahead and extend this to the dart line. After doing that, I went ahead to draw these tiny holes to indicate the loops. So the next thing to do is cut out the patterns. So guys, this is what the upper part looks like with the zipper allowance included. Now I'm going to take out the zipper allowance. This is what it looks like after cutting all the patterns. So I'm just going to arrange them this way and then I'll label it as A, B, C and D. We have four patterns here. So if you wish to have more that, you can go ahead and insert it on the bigger portion of the patterns. So guys, I'm going to tape the back piece together like this because I want to give it a new waistline. So I've gone ahead to assemble the upper part and the lower part of this back piece as you can see. 
And the next thing I'll do is to measure the length of what I want to have around the corset part. So I'll be leaving this at 10 inches and then I'll make a point there. After I am done with that part, I'll head over to repeat the same thing on the other part as well. So I'll measure 10 inch here and make a point there. Then I'll use my curve ruler. I'll be placing it this way to draw out a curved line, just like you see me doing. After doing that, I'm going to flip it over and mark a curve on the other side. So just watch closely and observe what I am doing. This hack is going to help us to have a balanced waistline when we are lacing our corset. You don't want to have your zipper looking so crooked after you are done zipping the skirt and lacing the back. So this hack is going to help us balance everything. Just in case you don't understand what I'm doing, I'll go ahead and explain once more. So I am making a curve on this part to meet at the original slanted waistline and the same curve is going to help us to have a balanced waistline at the loop area. So place a curve like this way and then connect upwards and also flip it on the other side to meet at the 10 inches mark I gave and that's it. So this is the zipper allowance for the skirt pattern. I'm going to open it up and insert a piece of paper here to level it up with this part and fill up the blank space. So guys, after inserting the paper, I'll go ahead and tape it all up together before connecting the straight line. So just place your straight ruler this way and connect a straight line from one side to the other and then also extend this line upwards for the zipper. So the next thing to do is cut it out. Now I am going to label this as the back of the skirt, so we have two pieces of the back. So guys, after everything, this is what I have, I went ahead to mark out the zipper allowance, okay, and then as you can see, I shaded them both. I also went ahead to contour the butt area, so the skirt can sit properly around the butt and fit nicely. As for this part of the corset, I'm going to be coming outwards by half inch because I want it to be a little bit closer and not reveal too much skin. So during the time I want to stitch, I'm going to divide this part into two equal halves and insert a boning casing there. Now here are all the patterns and this is the fabric I intend using. I have my boning and I also have my door face for the boning casing and also I have an stay and I have the net and the door face I want to use for the upper part. So we are going to be stitching this in the part 2. Please like and share this video. I'll see you guys next time.